Hi everybody, this is Jim Wallace, alias Mr. Graphic, doing another vlog. In the past, I've done these vlogs from my minivan, but it's in the shop this morning, had a little minor issue, so uh, I'm doing this from my little home studio, and uh, I plan on doing more things from this studio in the future, but right now, uh, I'm doing a vlog. <laughs> uh, uh, I'm basically today going to talk about our uh, local zoo. Uh, and, uh, but first I'd like to uh, uh, talk about something else. Uh, the camera I'll, I'll be using to take pictures at the, uh, the zoo uh, uses the same one inch sensor as the uh, Phantom 5. And this is my uh, Sony RX10 camera. This is the big brother to the very popular RX100 series. Uh, they make five uh, or six RX100s. I have two, two of those models, and they're pocket size, and they have a one-inch sensor. And this, this thing has a 600-millimeter uh, zoom lens all the way up to 28-millimeter wide angle. So this is a fantastic camera, but it is large, so it takes... Uh, an effort to take it around with me. So most of my pictures are taken with the small RX100, which I keep one of those in my van, or an iPhone. And uh, so anyway, that's the camera I took. Uh, when I took the photographs, I'll show you later from the uh, Indianapolis Zoo. Uh, I, uh, this little home studio, this is really the first time I've used it. Uh, so I don't have everything set up right. But I bought a couple of newer, that's the uh, brand name, newer LED lights, and they're about so big, and they have a few hundred LEDs, uh, half of which are white and half of which are yellow. So you can adjust the color or uh, color temperature of the, uh, of the light. Now right now I'm just using one of those, uh, but I've got two, and uh, I don't think I need two. <laughs> they, uh, I, this is only uh, at very low brightness, but I wanted a quality light, and uh, I think I've uh, I think I got it. Uh, but uh, back back to the zoo. Uh, when you go to the zoo, uh, when I went to the zoo this particular day uh, last summer, uh, it was Children's Day. I went on that day to save some money. But that turned out to be a bad, bad idea because you, if you want to take pictures, you don't want a bunch of kids crawling and running all over the place. And, you know, you want pictures of the animals, not, not kids and people. So it was very crowded. And even worse, uh, all the kids go up to the aquariums and put their little grubby fingerprints all over the glass. So pictures of snakes and fish and back of glass uh, becomes an issue. So what you do, you clean the glass with a rag, which you should have with you, and put, the, uh, put your camera lens right against the glass. This will eliminate uh, reflections, and it will also blur out any, any fingerprints or cra cracks that may be in the glass. It's too close to focus. So uh, that's a little tip. Another tip about taking pictures at a zoo, uh, we all want pictures of the big the big game animals, the lions, the tigers, the elephants, the hippos. Well, uh, those animals like to sit around in the sun all day, I mean in the shade all day, and they sleep uh, most of the time. And a photograph of a lion sleeping is not very exciting. So um, if you want to get pictures of animals like that, you want to get to the zoo as early as possible. In the morning, they, uh, they get up and walk around and look for food and that kind of thing. And that, that's the main time of the day when they walk around or after sunset. So get to the zoo as soon as, as you can when they open. Get pictures of the, of the large a animals, the mammals first, uh, while you can get good photographs of them. Because we all want a head of a lion staring at the camera, right? Well, uh, that's hard to do during the day. And you may have to wait, oh, 15 minutes if they're sleeping in order for them to raise their head just long enough to get a picture. And if you miss that few seconds, uh, <laughs> it's maybe another half an hour. So uh, uh, this, just a couple of tips to uh, take with you to the zoo. Uh, when I went to the zoo, I took over 600 photographs. 
and uh, from nine o'clock in the morning until they closed around six o'clock. And uh, I took several pictures of different subjects, the same subject, so you don't wind up with 650 different pictures. You wind up with maybe 450 or 500 after you sort everything out and find the best photos and the best angles and uh, so forth, so on and so on. Uh, most people think your subject is the most important part about a photograph, and it is, but uh, number one or two is lighting. You've got to have good lighting for a small studio like this, or no matter what you take a picture of, if you have poor lighting, uh, it's, it's, it's just not worth watching. Nobody wants to watch it. So uh, uh, I would recommend that all of you who uh, may not have the best lighting and, uh, you know, watch some YouTube videos on, on the subject uh, about photography and studio lighting and all kinds of lighting because the color temperature, the color of the lighting, the angle, uh, backlighting, there's a whole bunch of things involved and you can improve your videos 500% very easily with some understanding of basic uh, lighting for photography. I appreciate all of you who have uh, tuned into this vlog uh, called Jim Wallace alias Mr. Graphic. And uh, I, if you liked the video, thumbs up. If not, <laughs> well, too bad. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, uh, sub please subscribe to this channel. And now I'm going to play about may maybe three dozen pictures out of those 600 that for you to look at. It'll only take a few minutes. Uh, you, there's not enough time to put all of those on here, but I do have them all on Flickr.com on my uh, website, which I now have over uh, 6,400 photographs on Flickr. And last time I checked yesterday, I had 4,300,000 views. I wish I had that many views here on YouTube, but <laughs> that's the way it is. So bye-bye for now, and uh, have a great day. Bye-bye.